All right, so just like I did the other week, updating you on how to upload your audiobook to ACX, I'm giving you a fresh updated tutorial for how to upload and self-publish your audiobook with Findaway Voices. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm MK Williams. I'm an author. I love sharing my insights about all things books and publishing with you. Before I get into the details of today's video, don't forget to hit subscribe. You'll be notified every week as I put out videos on publishing, make a career to being an author, and now being a mompreneur. And as you may know, if you've been following my channel for a bit, I've been self-publishing since 2015. Uh, but starting in 2023, I did start the process of trying to get my latest book traditionally published for lots of reasons. I have a video linked you can watch. Um, so I am letting anybody watching know at the beginning of each video, is this for somebody looking to self-publish or traditionally publish? And today, this is for self-publishing an audiobook. Now, I do know some traditionally published authors who either retained their audio rights to begin with or have their audio rights reverted, who are then looking to self-publish the audio version. And I also know a lot of self-published authors who need to self-publish the whole thing. Um, so if that is you, if you have the rights to self-publish your audiobook, then this would be for you. Um, and today I'm going to show you how to upload your audiobook onto Findaway Voices. Now, a little disclaimer I gave with the ACX video that also applies to this. So this is if you already have your finished audio files that you're going to upload to the platform. If you are looking for a tutorial on how to find a narrator through Findaway Voices, pay them through Findaway Voices, all that stuff, that's not this video um, because I self-narrated my book and I'm bringing the files. Um, the same process would apply if you went to say like Fiverr, um, Readsy, one of the Facebook forums or other forums where you could find a professional narrator. You worked with them offline, you compensated them already, and now you just have your final files to upload. So that is what this video is. If you're looking for how to find a narrator, that's not this video. All right, before we start to upload, here's what you need. You need your finished audio files. You need your opening and closing credits and you need your retail sample. Now those are part of your audio files, but I feel like a lot of authors forget those till the last minute. So you need to have those too. You need to have your audiobook cover and your ISBN. All right, let's dive right in. Hello, so we are here today in Findaway Voices to upload the audiobook for my short story interview with a van lifer. Um, I literally just recorded uploading all the files over to ACX. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload here with Findaway Voices now. So I'm gonna click this bright green button up here under pro new project. So if you start from the left-hand menu, there's this alert when you first log in. Um, there's the headphone, that is your audiobooks. And then on the bright green button at the top right, um, my audiobooks, I'm gonna start a new project. Okay, in this case, I'm doing something that I usually recommend to never do, which I just typed in the title. Um, I usually recommend copy and paste, um, but I am very meticulously now looking at this for any typos. I've seen people kind of fat finger when they're excited um, and have typos in their titles, and it's like your birth certificate. It's really hard to change the title on it. Okay, so right ahead, I have this plus sign. I can go ahead and navigate to my cover. Beautiful. And if I needed to change that, I could remove Okay, so this is where I could upload supplemental files. If I had any book club um, questionnaires or things like that, discussion points, if this was nonfiction and I had any um, graphs, worksheets, anything like that that goes along, um, I could upload that here, but I don't have that. Okay, so in this case, I am copy and pasting my description because it's already been formatted. Um, now, I will probably go back at some point and revise my description for audio to say, oh, this is narrated by the author um, and have other things like that in there. But for now, I am just MK Williams Publishing. That's me. Oh, that was actually nice that they added that. That's been something that's kind of bugged me before. So you write the name, you have to click add. Um, and so it's really nice that they now have this little reminder that says to add that. So the author is me, the narrator is me. So exciting. Okay, English language. So as you work through, you're gonna see that some of these questions are pretty self-explanatory. It's unabridged. Um, it's an English language for me. Um, no awards yet. Okay, so characters so, or keywords. So this is a short story. So 
So I can keep adding more and more of those. And the, the nice thing is with some of the metadata, like obviously your title, um, your publisher, the author, those things aren't you can't change those once they're in, they're locked in. Your metadata, you can go in and change and revise as needed. So that's obviously very helpful. So this is fiction. I'll say 18 plus. I don't think there's anything in here that um, would preclude a younger person from reading it, but it's not. that's not the target audience. So this is one thing that I don't love about vampires is that they're either under paranormal romance, which not all vampire stories are romance, um, or they're under young adult. So I'm just gonna go with short, short stories, single author. Okay, so I have my primary BSAC, I have an additional BSAC, um, so I'm able to continue on. Um, so I have a document that has all my important information for each book, including the associated ISBNs. Okay. So I always bring my own ISBNs. Um, yes, I am sure, even if it's no cost to me, I have my own ISBN. There we go. I use the same ISBN for both retail and for library. And now I'm going to be putting in my ebook ISBNs. Again, I own the ISBN. I want to make sure wherever this is going to be linked in the world on Barnes and Noble, where I distribute my ebook right now through Draft to Digital Smashwords, I want to make sure when it goes for Nook Audio that they can link it together. I want to make sure the same thing with the print that they're all linked together. So um, wherever it's appearing for retail, that people can easily find it. This audiobook, no, this version of this audiobook, no, it has not been available before. Um, so I'm just going to say tomorrow. Tomorrow can be the release date. That sounds great. Okay, copyright. Yeah, the source copyright year is 2022. Uh, okay. I am publishing. I'll see. And the audio copyright year is this year. Set price. Okay, I usually do five fifty. Now I know uh, the general recommendation is to have the pricing for libraries higher because they are obviously not going to wear down a digital product. Um, so I will price it at twice. Um, and usually it tells like. Nope, they're different. Um, so yeah, it always pops that up to say, hey, it looks like you've entered something that's the same or um, not that twice recommended amount. That's exactly twice. Um, so that's what I've listed there. I don't need to add launch pricing, but this is something really nice to do to say, hey, um, for the first week while this is launched, while it's on pre-order, you can set this different price. Um, this the print and ebook version came out last year, so I'm just ready to get the audiobook out. But if I was trying to coordinate everything all at once, I would definitely be taking advantage of the launch pricing to say, hey, you know, it's going to be discounted for that first week for a while it's on pre-order. Um, so I have this nice little check mark that says changes saved. So then I am free to go back up to the top of the page um, and look at my distribution agreement. Full distribution. So I am going to be changing this. I do not want full distribution um, because I am already going to be getting Audible, Amazon, and Apple through ACX. So I'm going to be scrolling down here and I'm going to uncheck a few. Um, now I can keep Apple. So even though ACX will distribute my audiobook to Apple, I can still distribute it to Apple from Findaway Voices um, and I prefer to do that. So I'm going to do that as well. Um, now, one thing that's interesting is I did create the auto narrated version of this audiobook on Google Play. Um, so it's a totally different audiobook, technically. It has a different narrator. Um, so I'm going to distribute this to Google Play and see what it says. Um, hopefully, it doesn't get kicked back. Um, but if it does, then that would explain why. Um, and I actually have a full. Uh, the full audiobook for both this audiobook and the AI narrated one um, available on YouTube if you actually want to hear the difference um, because I needed a placeholder. The actor who was out of work was me um, until I had time to record it. So um, I just wanted to see what that difference would be. So if you want to check that out too, you can absolutely do that. Okay, confirm my selections.
Okay, distribution option saved. Awesome, so now I have to go back up to the top um, and add the audio. And again, um, opening credits, any front matter, uh, body matter, back matter, and end credits, retail sample. Um, what's really nice is that I can actually just drag and drop. So that is one thing that I do like with this um, user interface over um, ACX is that the drag and drop is just really nice. Front matter, I don't have any other front matter. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the body matter. So interview with a Van Lifer. And I'm gonna put the acknowledgements in the back matter. Closing credits and uh, retail sample. Now what I found is that if my files pass the ACX Audio Lab requirements, that they fly through Find Away Voices with flying colors, um, which is very nice. So that is one thing that I do like having the free ACX Audio Lab to look through there. Now one thing you'll notice that is that each chapter has to be shorter than 120 minutes. ACX has the same requirement. I think it's actually 125. So this is one short story, but all in one sitting, it's about an hour of me reading. So I was able to get away with that. But if it had been a longer novella, I have a longer novella. I had to sh chop it up into five different chapters um, of about uh, 30 minutes each to be able to get it to fit. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Ideally, you want your section breaks to match whatever's in your print book or ebook. So if you have 10 chapters, you should have 10 different chapters in here. Again, it's a short story, so that's why it's a little different. Um, I don't like that it changed that to not be capitalized, so I'm gonna fix that. So with that, I am good to go. So at the very bottom, I'm going to click Submit Audio Files and this bright blue button. Confirm the chapter names. Yep, that's what I want it to be. Now I could change that later. If I did find a typo, um, I could change it. They would just have to then resend it to the vendors and it just takes a while for all of them to get the update. Okay, so everything's there from this page. So what's nice is that this page finally says continue to final review and submission. So the other pages didn't have that kind of next button, but this one does. Continue to final review and submit. Title, description, author, narrator, publisher, keywords, all that beautiful stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit for Publishing. Okay, just been submitted, and then I'll get a message from Find Away Voices saying it's approved or no, you have edits, um, and I'll get that back, and it'll be out to the world. That's how you do it. All right, and as you can see, I was able to submit everything. My audiobook was approved within, I wanna say 24 hours, um, but it did take about a full week to see all the links really starting to come through. So that's one thing to keep in mind, even if it's approved on one day, um, it still takes a while for all your links to show up. And I highly encourage you to wait until the links are visible on multiple platforms before you announce the audiobook. Otherwise you're saying it's here and people might say, oh, but what about this and what about this? And you think, oh no, no, it's coming soon. And then you remind them, they're like, ah, oh, but they didn't have it last time. Like just wait and you can say available all the places. Um, and as a reminder for me to you, Interview with a Van Lifer is now available all of the different places that Find Away Voices distributes to, so I hope that you'll check it out. And if you haven't seen on my previous videos, I'm actually running an experiment right now on YouTube where I've uploaded my Interview with a Van Lifer audiobook to YouTube, and I've also uploaded an AI narrated version so you can test and compare which one you think sounds better, what do you think of the differences. Um, so I'm gonna link those below too for you to check out. Now, obviously, if you listen to the audiobook for free on YouTube, or really if you buy it somewhere and listen to it, please don't forget to leave a review that really helps other listeners listeners and readers find the story, okay? All right, what other questions do you have about self-publishing audiobooks, whether it's on Find Away Voices or another platform? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and maybe even hit that shiny new thanks button. That'll tell YouTube that you got value from this information, and then they can get it in front of other authors like us. Now you can get back to writing your book.